Bolivia. Sports be coming to you from the Golf Club Eagle Point Studios on this Thursday. Brought to you by the fine folks at Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. They've got a 0% sales event going on right now. First time ever. Get out there, or you can go more to your door. You never have to leave. You get to a brand new Honda right there. Joined now by Dustin Shooty. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, Jim. I hear there's kind of a big, big basketball game tonight or something along those lines. You know, that's what I've been told. Rumor has it, as Adele would say, rumor has it, uh, Indiana Purdue scheduled uh, right now. I say scheduled because we've seen Nebraska uh, the day after Indiana played them had to go on a COVID pause. Michigan State, Indiana's next opponent on Sunday on a COVID or had a game postponed. I would consider that a COVID pause. Um, kind of a weird Spot asking out a tweet. I'm like, how long is Indiana get to keep dodging this COVID bullet? Uh, it's it's tricky. It's going to happen. We see it happen all the time. Um, what's going to happen in the Big Ten, though, when you get those – how do they make these games? you got to make these games up. I would imagine it's this is not football. It's, football is a lot more difficult uh, to do that. Basketball, you, you can, and it's going to obviously play a big role in involving the Big Ten standings. Not that it might not matter with Michigan. They may just decide to run away with it and say, screw the rest of y'all. Y'all can fight for whatever position you want to fight for. But, yes, uh, big game tonight. Indiana welcomes in Purdue. I watched the funnest game of the, of the year for me last night. Texas, Texas Tech. Man, and I hate – I fell asleep at, before the end, and I woke up at like 2 in the morning to see – saw how it ended. I was so mad because I was watching that game, and it was it was just a great, gritty battle. I mean, these guys, they were, and I mean, they were John, there was technicals, there weren't any fights, but it was, it was intense and, um, it was just a fun game and Texas Tech on the road drains a, a three at the buzzer. It, it was just, that, that was a gritty back and forth. That was just a fun game to watch. Well, I didn't see that game because I uh, I watched the, the Ohio State Northwestern game. Then I watched a little point break and then fell asleep uh, around midnight. So I didn't get to catch that game. But hopefully that's a preview of what's to come tonight because, you know, it, it, you talk about obviously the Big Ten is playing these games without having any fans in the arena. And we've already talked about how that's a big deal at a place like Indiana or a place like Purdue, places that typically draw sellout crowds, no matter whether they're playing, um, you know, the number one ranked team in the country or, or the worst team in the country. Um, so when you amplify the fact that it's going to be a rivalry game, usually those teams feed off that energy. You know, you, you can feel the hate, you can feel the, you can feel the passion in the arena. Um, but obviously if the game was that intense last night between Texas and Texas tech, two teams that really don't like each other, then you might see that same sort of combativeness tonight and, co and competitiveness tonight. And you hope so, because, you know, I know it's been a little lopsided recently, but Indiana Purdue, in my mind, growing up is, is has always been one of the top two or three basketball rivalries um, in, in college sports in Duke and North Carolina and Louisville, Kentucky. So uh, that's a good sign. Uh, obviously, we saw Texas earlier this year. They're really good basketball team. So for Texas Tech to knock them off, uh, that that's a that's a huge win for them. But they, the fact that you say that it, there was some jawing going on and they didn't lose sight of that rivalry, I, that gives me optimism for a, for a game like tonight. Even though we don't have fans in the arena, um, it should still be a really fun game because both teams want to win this game. Yeah, I, you point that is exactly what Purdue, Indiana used to remind me of. Man, that's why I enjoyed it so much. It was exactly that. Just a tough, rugged, hard fought. And I mean, intense game that doesn't go over the line, but it was right there. You, you bump right up to it. And they did all night. There was John. It was great, but they were hitting shots. It was just f f scrapping. It, this was a game you could tell both teams wanted to win. And that's exactly what you have to see tonight. If you don't see that, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, we, we I, I've mentioned, I said on a tweet yesterday, Indiana, we've seen them play gritty at times this year 
And I've seen Trace Jackson Davis play pissed off. And let me tell you, they need both of those because a pissed off Trace Jackson Davis, he's hard to stop. I mean, he he gets he gets wicked, but that's not something he can do for 40 minutes. Hasn't done that for 40 minutes. He's logged a ton of minutes. But the longer he can play pissed off, and Indiana as a team has to play pissed off. They should be pissed at themselves. Put yourself in a position to where you have to do things. And I mean, and I think that's a mindset that they have to enter. You've got to be as gritty as you've ever been tonight. You need this win beyond comprehension. For your coach, he's 0-5 against Purdue. He can't beat Matt Painter as the is the deal. I'm not saying that's not accurate. I'm just saying that's the perceived perception. But you've got to, to do out and, and just lay it on the line. Play for – let's talk about an old-fashioned rivalry game. Play for your school. Do the – just lay it on the line. That's what it's going to take. 40 minutes of that. 40 minutes of that. Not 39, 40. Yeah, and, and we've seen this in, in recent years when – in my opinion, Indiana has had the better team and still Purdue comes away with the win. And you can't really, it's, it's really hard to explain. You think about those games last year, like the thing that was most disappointing last year and, and not to bring up bad memories, but obviously you have the coach Knight coming back to assembly hall, the day of the Purdue Indiana game. And he's introduced at halftime. And you think that, that the players are going to feed off that, off that passion. They're going to feed off that energy, off that, you know, off of all of that was going on. And then Purdue comes out and they get a win. And talk about, we've talked about all season, really, Indiana taking that next step and showing that Archie Miller can be the coach of this program. And, and this is kind of that next stepping stone. You have to beat Purdue. These two teams are about as even as you get. Uh, and and I, when, you, when you have two even match teams, usually the win goes to the team with the best player. And I don't think there's any question that Trace Jackson Davis is going to be the best player on the floor tonight, but he's got to get help around him. Indiana has got to make shots because Purdue has, has had the same issues. Purdue is coming off of, you know, they, they just, overcame a 17 point deficit to Michigan state on the road and got a thrilling one point win in East Lansing. Uh, and Indiana's won what three of their last four now, I think. Uh, so both teams have a lot of confidence right now, but we've seen in the past where Indiana has been playing really well and they look like the better team and Purdue just comes out and they've got their number. So you have to play with that kind of passion tonight. You can't hang it all on trace Jackson Davis. You have to get it from everybody around you. And this is the time where you know, Archie Miller has to put an emphasis on this game because you can't go another year without beating Purdue. And if you can't beat them on the home floor, you know, even though we talked about this being a neutral site game, essentially uh, with no fans, it's going to be awfully hard to win that game in Mackey arena uh, where you haven't had much success, even when you were more competitive against Purdue. So this is a huge game tonight, not just for the big 10 standings and, and for the rivalry, but this is a huge game to sh for Archie Miller to say, you know what? We finally got over this obstacle. Now we can get things rolling. And in the big picture, once again, that means you've won four of your last five games with the only loss being a road loss to a ranked really good Wisconsin team. Things would start to look a little bit up and we start to talk about this team maybe taking that next step when they've been behind, behind kind of the eight ball here in the early part of the season. So just uh, you can't under underestimate or, or you know understate how important this game is not just from the Indiana Purdue perspective but what it does for Indiana's momentum past tonight yeah I think that's one of the things that I I have not personally seen is Archie uh use Indiana as a a platform for these for the for the players hey you play for Indiana you are this is Indiana this is Indiana basketball that 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 does not exist. There's no cult that that culture that has always been there. I don't see that personally, and therefore I don't think Purdue matters to him personally any more than Northwestern. Yeah. And I think that carries over because I, I think if you look back, you can see, you can hear. It, it's all it's audibly very evident when a coach adopts that mantra. I'm just never just never seen that here, and that's. Not that's I guess neither here nor there, but I, I think that it affects how you represent. I think that represents how you can call up when you really need to call it up, and because that's not always been evident. And, and let me let me just chime in here on the other side of that because I remember I don't know if this was you know eight ten years ago or whenever it was, but I remember Matt Painter saying uh, before they before Purdue hosted Indiana one season at Mackey Arena. I remember he said, "If you lose to Indiana." or if we lose to Indiana on our home floor, you're going to wish you never came to Purdue. 
I mean, that just sets the tone. So whether you win or lose, you know, you have to set that tone and say, you know, this is this is not acceptable. We don't care how good Indiana is. We don't care how bad we are. This is a game that means something, not just to this program, to the school, but to these fans, the alumni, everybody watching. This is a game that matters to the state. And I think you're right. I don't think I, I would agree with you. I, I don't. I haven't seen that same sort of emphasis on this game um, placed on by, by Archie Miller. And that's something you have to change tonight. If even if that, that, that's not been your message the last three years, you have to make that your message to your team tonight. You have to win this game. I agree. Uh, Will, we've got a, a clip from Archie, as a matter of fact, that uh, he's talking about playing uh, this game and where they, man, they, they, they've they been through a lot. They played three games in succession. Uh, one was an overtime, double overtime game. Trace Jackson Davis logged a ton of minutes. Uh, let's hear what Archie had to say uh, talking about that. Yeah, opening statement here, just coming off of a, a long week last week, you know, playing three games in seven days. And- you know, we have a lot of wear and tear on our bodies, and uh, we're trying to get recovered and obviously get ready to play a really good Purdue team uh, tomorrow night. And um, you know, from this point forward, you know, we really don't have a, a ton of a ton of breaks uh, as you look forward. So, biggest thing is trying to get fresh, get ready, and um, at the end of the day, it's a really good Purdue team on Thursday night. It's been our focus. There's Archie Miller talking about uh, taking on Purdue, Purdue tonight. Uh, Trevor Gersmill got uh, some great information to me from uh, the Hoosier.com. Purdue really, you, you, you know, Archie hangs his hat on defense, but uh, Purdue is really kind of sticking out defensively. Well, I lost my information. There we go. Uh, number 14 in Kimpom. That's defense efficiency, number 35. Or is that IU reversed? Purdue tops the Big Ten and. Defense only allowing 64 points a game, and they're only scoring 66. So this is going to be this is going to be one of those. Well, last year when when Bob Knight came back, what well, what was the score? 40. Indiana scored 40 points or something. It was it was just a ugly gutter beatdown. Uh, but protecting the three, we we know that that's big. But for Indiana, it's it's very big because four of their five losses have come when their opponents make. 35% or better from behind the strike. But, of course, it's the opposite if they if they get them go the other way. We'll see how that defense is. But more importantly, how's Indiana going to manufacture offense? In a low-scoring game like this, this, to me, it benefits Indiana because of their, their lack of offense. This type of game that they're, they're fine with because – you basically just slug out getting points. You 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 get it to Trace Jackson. You, you whatever ta- whatever you, you just get points because it doesn't. It's not going to take a ton a- as many as normal. But you have to shoot. You you have to hit because the also the opportunities are less. So you just have to be more accurate. Uh, but it, this is a game, and that's why I'm saying you you have to. When I say slug it out, you're going to have to grit this game out. It's a grit, physical, beating and banging. They're going to do everything they can to take you out of your game because they know they can. You can't take them out of theirs. They're, they're on the road. They're, they're, it's, they're, they're already at a disadvantage, so to speak. But I, that's that's what I see playing out. Yeah, and I mean, I think Purdue, and I, I if I remember correctly, this was kind of the strategy last year was to just kind of take Trace Jackson Davis out of the game um, or make him work extra hard to get his points. And when you do that, you put the onus on then the other guys on the floor to, to knock down shots. And at times, you know, Indiana's demonstrated the ability to do that, but when they're not hitting shots, I mean, they can get beat by anybody. Uh, and we've seen that and, and they've struggled to, to identify shooters on the floor. So I think that the game strategy is going to be, pretty similar to what it is. I mean, Purdue's got multiple, as they've always had, they have multiple big bodies. I don't think, I think Travion Williams is the best matchup for Trace Jackson Davis. I don't think Zach Eady is nearly as athletic as, as uh, TJD, but you know, he's, they're going to keep fresh bodies on him. They're going to try to take him out of the game. And that becomes the question then for Indiana. Are you going to have somebody who's going to step up and make those big plays and hit those big shots? And I think a guy like race Thompson tonight is going to be huge for them uh, because you've got to have somebody who's making those extra plays. You're going to have to probably get a lot of, if you're not hitting shots, you got to get a lot of second chance opportunities. 
And a guy like uh, uh, Race Thompson who can crash the boards and get offensive rebounds and get you second chance opportunities, that's how you're going to win this game if you're not hitting shots. So um, it's going to be an interesting game plan. Last year, Purdue did a good job of taking Trace Jackson Davis out of the out of the mix. Uh, and I think that that's going to be their primary goal today. If they take him out and and they and everybody else beats him, if Indiana hits you know 15 three point shots tonight and they get a win, I think Matt Painter says you know what they beat us by hitting shots and that was our game plan. We wanted to make them hit shots tonight, and that's something that they haven't demonstrated they've been able to do consistently throughout the season. So you know we'll see. It's going to be a fun matchup though. I I do expect this game regardless of outcome. I think it's going to be close because like I said. These two teams, it's it's like the Spider-Man meme, right? They're just pointing at each other because it's basically the same team right now. Uh, make sure you hit us up on the Andy Moore Honda hotline, 812-269-6367. Tim did. Says, uh, Trace Jackson Davis, goal should be play, to play like the Big Ten Player of the Week every game. Yeah, exactly, because if he does that, uh, it's going to – pay great dividends for Indiana. He also said, I think this is the year we beat Purdue by 10 points. Yeah, that 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 does not happen. I can promise you that. <laughs> not, not in this game. No, I mean, they may win. They're not going to win by 10, but uh, not in this game. Ryan from Whitlore, Mega Michigan, hit the text line as well. The uh, Andy Moore Honda hotline says, Coach Miller and especially Coach Robert can relay the strong message to the players, the importance of this rivalry. Well, they can, but will they? Uh, also, uh, Chris hit us up as well. A depot gone is predicted. We're going to talk about that next when we come back after the break. You're listening to Indiana Sports Beat. Coming to you from the Golf Club Eagle Point Studios, brought to you by the great folks at Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. 0% sales event going on right now, the first time ever. You can get more to your door. Just give them a call or get them up on andymorehonda.com. Also, French Lake Resort and Casino, they're open, ready for you. We're back with more right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not covering the. <laughs> Man, I can't wait to get all that crap recorded so I can quit saying it. <laughs> it's just so much. It is a mouthful. Oh, I mean, I, I just like I hear people, you know, do it all the time. I'm like, God, how do they do all that? You got to get all this shit. That, 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 that. Yep. There's an art to it. I'm not very good at it, but Ola Depot gone. <laughs> What a deal. What a deal for the Pacers. And, and everybody's basically saying good riddance. Well, except for the fa except for the fans. Well, the fans aren't, but or, oh yeah, Alan, good job. Thank you. Alan uh hit us up on the deal too. Um Urban Meyer to Jacksonville. Has that been finalized? No, but oh it's it's the it's the closest thing to happen yet for Urban Meyer, I think. That's true. Right, right. yeah, yeah. I just didn't know. I, I haven't checked anything this morning, so I didn't know if they finalized anything. I it gets that close. He's got. He's going somewhere. There's too many people. Be, there, there are too many people throwing money at him. Oh, I know. Hey, but see, yeah, the thing yeah. is, he does not need the money. No, it's in not any no. ways. It I, ain't I think, about the money. I'm guessing. It's oh, William got him a new camera, by the way. It looks good. Yeah. This is my work camera. I just had it set up for the other day when I did my Eagle Scout board of review. Nice. Yeah, nice little. It's setup actually a work there. camera. I'm telling you, I can't believe you just. Yeah, it, we're going. I'm gonna get you set up. <laughs> I'll send. I'm gonna send you a camera. Yes. There, it's amazing the difference they make. Oh, I'm sure. It's like no, it, it's. <laughs> Oh, it's amazing, yeah. I can, get, I can get a nice little desk lamp to help with my lighting. <laughs> Except you don't want to do it from the bottom up. Trees, <laughs> shadows. It looks like I a Halloween. I got from Goodwill. What's that? I got big, like, uh, studio lights for, like, photography. Those big canvas lights. Yeah. I found them at Goodwill for 20 bucks. Nice. That's exactly, yeah, that's... Yeah. The beach is a six dollar daily lunch special from 10 30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday, featuring a sandwich, fries, or onion rings, or a seven inch pizza and a non alcoholic drink for just six. Is Trevor here? Karaoke fun every Friday and Saturday night. Yeah. Leroy's Tavern, a West Side. Yeah, he's in the Zoom call. He's where? On Vernon Avenue. He's in the Zoom call. How does that? That's cool. 
in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. <laughs> Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios on this Thursday. Brought to you by the fine folks at Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Honda's Bloomington's number one Honda dealer, by the way. Zero percent sales event going on right now, or you can get more to your door. AndyMoreHonda.com. French Lake Resort and Casino, they're all open, waiting for you, ready to come. I'm going there this weekend. I'm looking forward to that. You ever been to French Lake, Dustin? I have not. I've looked up uh, vacation oh, packages before, but I've never actually made the journey down there. At some point, I will get down there. Well, I guess that needs there to happen. Yes, it needs to happen soon. It's an incredible place. Uh, tucked away, the jewel of southwestern Indiana. It's funny. <laughs> we used to make fun of this because they're uh, Brock Byer was a, a show that I, I loved. It was hilarious, just freaking hilarious. Yep. But and they had Joe Buck on there sometimes. It was his nemesis friend, and and one time he's a Proposedly doing a, a broadcast from from French Lick for the LPGA Seniors Championship or some crap that they made up, and he <laughs> called it the Jewel, the Jewel of Southeastern Indiana. And I'm like, okay, if they're gonna use the name, why not put it in the real part of the state? It's in right. the southwest part of the state, not the southeast. And or maybe Joe Buck's not that smart. I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, Victor Oladipo gone. He's uh, he joins Eric Gordon on the Houston Rockets along with two Kentucky players probably in the starting lineup, yep. which is kind of funny. You've got Victor Oladipo and Eric Gordon and John Wall and, and Boogie Cousins um, there, which is weird, uh, yeah. but that's that's funny. Uh, Oladipo uh, kind of was loved by everybody, and all of a sudden he wasn't. Um, a lot of the pundits I've seen <laughs> – Dan Dockett, she post tweeted, uh, don't let the door hit you, Vic. Uh, I mean, it's but that's been along the I'm not gonna say all the media, but you kind of really that chatter on the court with other players last year really that's that was that's that kind of really put a little stain on his Pacers legacy. Well, and you look at what you go back to the Paul George situation and saying, you know, this is my city and I want to win a championship here. And then he decides he wants to leave and, um, you know, doesn't, doesn't want to stay in Indiana anymore and ends up going to the Oklahoma city thunder. And then you get a, you get a great deal for Paul, for Paul George, you get Victor Oladipo. Um, and this is a guy who says, this is my city. I want to win a championship here. And he's beloved by the fans and he was a great college player here. And I think it was over the summer, sometime in the off season, I know they played through the summer sometime in the off season, basically said he wants to win a championship and, and wherever he's going to have the best opportunity to do that. And I think a lot of people thought that Indiana was going to be that spot, but um, you know, it was clear on an expiring deal uh, that it was unclear if he was going to stick around Indiana or not, or he might go to Miami or he may go to Houston anyway, or, you know, wherever there was a chance for him to win a title. And so I think that the Pacers did the right move. You know, he, he was, a, he was a great player here um, for the Pacers for a lot of years. And I think that there might've been some animosity between he and the training staff with his injuries um, that he sustained. So we, we don't know what's going on there, but you know, I, I have no ill will towards Vic. Uh, he, he played great. He was always great with the fans. Um, and he played, you know, the, the one thing you can say about him is that even though he, he wanted, I'm not going to say he wanted out, but even though he thought about maybe looking at other places, he played hard every night. He continued to play defense. He continued to knock down big shots. Um, he continued to get other guys involved and, and help the Pacers be the best team they could be. And you look at what happens with James Harden and Houston and Kyrie Irving and Brooklyn. And that's not always the case. You know, Kyrie Irving hasn't played in, what, five or six games? He hasn't let the team know what he's doing. Uh, uh, James Harden has struggled, and, and he's caused he's a lot of He's doing podcasts problems. while his team's on TV playing. Yes, yes, exa exactly. So talk, it, talk about Kyrie Irving, for those of you not up to speed on that. While his team was playing, he was doing uh, something with a, a Manhattan DA who was running for, for office or something, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I don't know the specifics of it, but you're right. He was doing, yeah, he was on a podcast, and and like I said, uh, James Harden has, has struggled. He's got caused locker room issues. Boogie Cousins was happy to see him go, and he said he'd rather play with John Wall anyway. So, you know, this could have been a disastrous situation. The Pacers could be, you know, two and ten or whatever, uh, and instead they're seven and four. And and he played hard every week. So I think that's all you can ask for. So I think it's a great deal. The Pacers get a younger guy. They get some salary cap space. Carice Levert is a guy who can fill up the stat sheet. So 
it'll take some time to get adjusted, but I, I think that there's a positive future there for Indiana, even with the deal. But I, no, well, no ill wishes from me. I think people are happy that they're getting Levert. I mean, they're, that, mm-hmm. that's a lot of people are, are liking that get. That's it's good, and I think that it may work out best from a, co- a cohesive standpoint. I, I really think that it's not going to take long at all. Um, I think people are going to be surprised on how quickly this gels together. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't disagree because the Pacers have guys who can get baskets, and and I think Lavert is a guy. He's he's just another guy that can fill it up. So when you have a bunch of guys who can step into that role and and are able to score points, step up when other guys are missing shots, you know, and obviously we've had TJ Warren out for a little bit, but you know, I think, I think it's a really good get. And like I said, I don't expect it to hit, to hit for him to hit the ground running and this team to gel right away. But you know, in a month or so, I think this team can be a really, really tough out. And we've seen, you know, there right now, there's no team that's separating itself in the, in the NBA East um eastern conference so pacers have as good a shot as any to be towards the top of that leaderboard uh in a month or so uh it's it's gonna be fun the pacers have been fun to watch all season with oladipo i don't think that changes with lavert on the floor for them not at all uh one of the top players in indiana is set to make his college decision is 2022 lawrence north wing cj gunn will make his announcement on february 7th so that's coming up gunn uh, doesn't have an official list which is shocking uh, but the main progress programs that have been he's hearing from consistently, of course, Indiana, Kansas State, Cincinnati, Xavier, and Missouri. I think Indiana's in good position there. But uh, the six foot five wing, he's been a top Indiana target in the 2022 class for quite some time. His dad told uh, the Hoosier.com previously that the offer was uh, very important for them, that CJ talks with Indiana every few days. Coach Archie and Coach O, Ostrom are great. Uh, That offer hit home because it's the hometown state, and that means something. So we'll see uh, February 7th, the the next recruiting target. Uh, Hadn't gone well for Indiana here of late, but uh, I think this one may be a little differently. Uh, We'll certainly see uh, the rise of Armand Franklin. Kind of a similar situation, a path that he followed, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Indiana also looking to get help from shooting. Uh, Will, I'm going to play that next clip here. Archie uh, talked about Parker Stewart. You know, we they they needed help shooting. Well, they get that uh, in a grad transfer, but when's he going to play? That's this thing. They don't know and how soon. He's there's been a lot of things that he's had to go through. His father passed away. His father was the coach at UT Martin. Uh, passed away. He's a grad transfer here. He's going to have two years of eligibility. I'm a little confused though. Will he have two years? Period or two years if he plays this last half of the semester. I I, Because I've never seen a a two-and-a-half-year thing. But because of the COVID, I think this may be that extra – the extra year. So it's kind of a throwaway year, basically. Now, how soon he can get up to speed, that's the question. There's a lot that goes on, a lot of logistics. You don't just walk onto the court and start playing. It's a completely different team, a completely different – program a completely different everything we've seen how defensively how long it can take some players to get up to speed on this um there's just so much covid you got all the covid stuff that's going on transport housing i mean i this is i I mentioned all that because normally that's done in the fall when it's Mm -hmm. you you just come it's easy there's no time now this is a little different situation but let's hear what archie had to say about that go ahead no i will uh, he is on campus, and he's um, just started to to really get um, integrated with our group. You know, uh, his arrival was, uh, you know, one of which he had to go through a quarantine situation. Uh, couldn't really be around a whole lot until he was through that. And uh, once he's through that, now he's he's in our testing program, and he can start to, uh, you know, get, you know, a little bit more acclimated. But um, he's got a lot of work to do just in terms of, getting acclimated with the team, getting acclimated with the doctors, COVID protocol, physical exams. So he's not anywhere near um, joining us for practice or anything like that. He is now full go in terms of being a part of what we're doing. And each day that goes by, hopefully we can get him a little bit smoother in terms of his transition. And the hope would be that uh, you know, hopefully sometime next week, the week after, you know, he can be- begin to start to work with us on the practice floor. 
um, and see where we're at with that. But as of right now, um, there's no real plan to uh, be able to integrate him any which way possible, just with uh, the circumstances surrounding uh, his arrival, uh, medical, doctors, um, everything that a normal guy who transfers in at the break has to go through. Well, that was about as clear as mud there, if you paid attention, because <laughs> in one sentence, he is nowhere close to being able to join. And then the next sentence, it's about a week away. Yep. Um, so uh, what does that mean? I, I don't know. I really don't know. Man, I, I'm going to go with maybe he's a week away from start joining for practice. Uh, but that's, you know, a lot of people say they're expecting him to just suit up and jump into a game. And that's not going to happen. Um, it's you, definitely gotta, not going to happen under Archie Miller. I can tell you that. No. And then <laughs> you got to look at all these other players who have been here since, since June, uh, working, integrating together. You got four freshmen who, who have come and worked hard to integrate. Now it'd be a little easier cause he's a veteran, but facts are facts. It's just, uh, but he's going to be a big help when he does get here. Uh, he can shoot. And so that's why people are so anxious. And I get that. They want to see him get out there uh, and, and do that. Um, so we'll see that. Uh, what else was I going to talk about? Uh, gosh, well, I, darn it. I, I, that's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to just chime in here. The interesting thing to me about that situation is going to be how is Indiana playing? And that might determine whether or not he gets on the floor this season or not. If Indiana, if they win tonight, let's say that they start winning game, you know, they win two out of every three or three out of every four, they get on a roll here. Are you going to do more harm than good by throwing him into the rotation and, and you know, tinkering with that nope. chemistry? Nope. Uh, no. <laughs> nope. Nope. Okay. He can shoot, man. He's a proven shooter. Um, he's a, I, I say that only because any other circumstance, I would probably be in agreement with you because I know okay. exactly what you're saying and it makes complete sense. It, 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 yes, it makes complete sense in any other situation, but I don't see this as a situation that has been cohesive in any way. Okay. There has not That's been fair. any, any consistency. So I don't think you're really disrupting anything. I think you can only act to solidify it, to be honest with you, because somebody that can consistently hit some shots will really solidify things, open things up uh, in the middle a little bit. Uh, it will not allow them to cheat so much because right now you can really just pack it in and, and dare Indiana to do that. Um, so, but, but also it can do other things. It can allow maybe Trey Galloway to, to look to score more instead of just trying to facilitate as much. And yeah. I think it can just do a lot of different things uh, if somebody can consistently knock down shots. We'll see how that goes. But uh, I know that they can win this game. There's no doubt. We've seen them. Oh, they yeah. have the talent, the grit. They can. It's will they? And, and that's going to be on them for certain. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the big thing. We, we know that they have the ability. We know that they have the talent. It, this talent, I would take you, you put this roster up against any other roster in the Big Ten right now, and I think you'd take it against most teams. And that's that's saying a lot considering, you know, look at Michigan, look at Wisconsin, look at Iowa, look at Illinois. But this is a really good roster. They just have not been able, like we've said, to knock down shots. And that's been the biggest problem. And and so if they're able to do that tonight, they have a great shot to win this game. But and I know Archie talks about defense a lot and, and how in some of the losses he's pointed to them not having a great defensive effort. I, I've thought Indiana for most of the season has played really well defensively, even when they're not playing well defensively. They've played well enough to win games. It's all about shot making. I think it's Dan Dockett who said it. it all, it's all about making shots, right? Isn't that his big thing? It's all, winning games is all about making shots, and that's what Indiana has failed to do. Um, but, you know, like I said, they've won three of their last four. They got a close win against Penn State. They beat Nebraska. They almost beat uh, uh, Wisconsin on the road. They have a little bit of momentum. It's carrying that over tonight and, and getting a win at home against a very beatable opponent. Like I said, these teams very similar in how they're made up, how their rosters look, and how they're playing right now. I think they both have the same record, too. I think they're both 8-5 and five or, or something like that on the season. I'm not, I don't have it right in front of me. We got plenty more coming up. You're listening to Indiana Sports Beat coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Mike Hart leaving Indiana. I uh, just saw yesterday on Tom Allen say that they're going to work on the running game because it just not, has not been there, and it hasn't. They're they're la you know toward the end of the conference. So I, does this really hurt Indiana? I don't really know. I think it's time for a shot in the arm in the running game, to be honest with you. But we'll talk about that because it's another position that you've got to replace. Uh, Urban Meyer to Jacksonville, talked a little bit about that. The NCAA looking to decide when, whether or not fans 
be coming to the tournament uh, in a few weeks. We'll talk about that. And John Laskowski is going to join us a little bit later on. Had him on the other day, but we lost him. Talking about uh, he was just going to talk about his interactions with Coach Knight, still visiting him, uh, and his uh, his comments on what, his former teammate Wayne Radford, uh, who passed away this week. But uh, you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat, brought to you by the great folks at Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. They've got a zero percent sales event going on right now. That's never happened. Or you can get more to your door. Just go to andymorehonda.com. Also, the great folks at French Lake Resort Casino, they're open and ready for you to come visit them. We'll talk about that as well when we come back. From the Golf Club Legal Point Studios, back right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. But I'm not covering the Hoosiers. Man, you. I'm getting good at that. You are. Be You're going to memorize soon. Oh, no. it's. I, I got some cheat notes. Probably. Trust me. I don't think. I don't know how much. I know Mike Hart is good, I guess. I don't know that he's good. He's a great running back. But I have not seen Indiana's running game do squat for four years. You know why you have Mike Hart, though? It's for recruiting. Yeah. Like, (laughs) I don't know that. I don't know. if I couldn't tell you if he's a good running back coach or not. But I really don't because I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think Stevie Scott has improved into barely since his freshman I I don't know that he's improved at all since he got here. I, he just looks very flat line. His mm-hmm. performance, his production. Man, I that's that's hard. That's hard to do as a running back. They're that's running back. really hard to do. Yeah. The the running back, they have they their running game has not been good the last 2 years. Now, how much of that is on the line? But see I, I will give him part of that, but there's no way. You look, Tevin Coleman. Tevin Coleman didn't need a damn line. Now, <laughs> no, he didn't. Everybody's not Tevin Coleman. I understand that. Right. But I've not seen, there's not been one breakaway that I recall from Steve. I don't think Scott. so either. Or he, he just does James. not have. They don't, it doesn't. Well, I saw a little bit in the Purdue game. I saw some, some stretches where, okay. you know, some, some 10, 11, 12 yarders at least. Okay. I, I don't. I don't see that from Stevie Scott ever. Hardly. I mean, he's just a, more like a fullback. Um, but they they don't. They their running game just does nothing to. And then they don't integrate him in the passing part of it at all. To I, it's it's weird. I've just. I, that's part of keeping this offense above average, but not great. Yeah. They, would you agree with that? I would agree with that, and I've thought. If I'm Tom Allen, you, I would almost tell Nick Sheridan, hey, I'm going to go get Kirk Shiraka. Wait, I, that guy helped Minnesota get 11 wins <laughs> with players comparable to what Indiana – I mean, Tyler Johnson's probably better than anybody Indiana had. I don't think that that's a hire that they make, though. I agree with I don't, you, but I – don't, I don't think so either, but that's that's what I would say. Hey, you know what? This this did not work out. Even when yeah, Penix was in there, they weren't great. Until from 10 30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday, featuring a sandwich, fries, or onion rings over a 7 inch pizza. Or the, the accordion is the cue every time, yeah. baby. <laughs> I swear, you, I swear it is. You hear the it is. You know, you're coming <laughs> back, man. <laughs> that should be the cue, and we need a break. I'm telling you. Welcome back. Indiana Sports Beat coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Brought to you by the fine folks at Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. 0% sales event right now. Get out there and get yourself a Honda. 0% APR financing. They've never done that. French Lake Resort and Casino are open and ready for business, too. Casino's open. Hotel's open. Beautiful place. Get down there and uh, check that out. Spring football. I forgot. We're going to have spring football, Dustin. There's... There's like, I don't know, a dozen conferences, maybe. I don't know, maybe it's not that many, but eight. The Big Sky, I can't remember. I didn't, I don't, didn't write them. Uh, the SWAC, the Big Sky, uh, all those, those conferences that did not play this fall. And remember, folks, everybody did not play. There were yep. many conferences that didn't. I forgot all about it until I saw somebody post that. I'm like, going, I'm going to kind of dig that. It's yeah. it's great because it's not the big time football, but it's it's it'll be fun and enough to, to try to get you through. Just get you through the spring, and it just it's it's going to be kind of cool. 
to, to go off with the, you know, we'll have spring football for, for those, you know, programs that are mostly practice like the big 10, you know, obviously they'll get a full spring this season, but yeah, FCS teams, my wife works at Kennesaw state. They're going to play uh, games this season. They're going to have uh, fans 20% capacity, I believe this year. Um, so, Hey, I might be able to get out to a game. Um, we'll see, but it, it's going to be fun. It's going to be, you're going to have meaningful football in the months between, I think they start in February and then they're going to play the playoffs through May. So, yeah, we get, we have like a one month break, and then we get more competitive football. And you compile that onto the NC uh, to college basketball, the NCAA tournament, and then Big Ten spring football. Ah, uh, I know. So there's, I'm not a big baseball fan. I know there's some baseball fans out there. The Masters is coming up. I mean, it's like it's just so many sports. Right? It's we we know not to take it for granted anymore, right? Because those three or four months we didn't have anything. We realized how awesome. Well, this something is. else. I was kind of when football ended. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a little happy because it's busy when you, you got football yes. going and basketball going and and blah everything going. And normally you'd have a lot of other stuff going on, soccer or if you're covering college. And I was like, it's been nice. I'm like, oh. And then I remembered, oh crap! The spring rolls around. All those fall sports are all yep. gonna be go soccer, baseball, all that volleyball. Stuff. I'm like, oh my. God, yeah, volleyball is like it's all gonna be happening at the same time. I'm like, oh man. So I don't know if I'm gonna be liking that so much as I now because now it sounds like that sounds really busy. That sounds busy. <coughs> it does sound busy, but hey, I, I love it. Um having having had to try to write stories for you know, like I said, however many months it was without anything going on, I'm more than happy to have, you know, six or seven different, well, there's probably a lot more than that, 10 or 12 different sports going on at one time and write stories about that as opposed to trying to write about a game that happened 20 years ago or something to that effect. I will take I will take the, the plethora of sports any day. Yeah, you know, I, I shouldn't have jumped out of the Mike Hart thing. Um, Tim, on the text, on the uh, Andy Moore Honda hotline, hit us up, says uh, you talked about Coach Allen mentioning working on the running game, whatnot, and then he's got to go out and get a new coach. Seen him do a lot of hiring from within, but now he's got a DC to replace and a running backs coach, both important position coaches, positions. So there's going to be somebody coming in from outside. I, I'm not saying that has to be for those two positions, but I don't know that there is an, a staff member for the DC position. Tom Allen prefers previous experience in that role. And if that is the case, that would eliminate Brandon Shelby, who's been with Indiana for 10 years, but does not have the previous experience uh, as a coordinator. Um, I don't know that there's anybody else on there that I just think where this program is at its level right now that, and I know Tom Allen has got a formula and it's worked. His, uh, you cannot dispute. He's a national coach of the year. What the hell are you going to say? But, I think this is, and I said this the last time with the OC, but this is an opportunity to elevate your staff, elevate, maybe get some additional Power 5 experience on that staff um, and to help you. I mean, you've been a, a head coach for four years. I mean, every bit helps, but I, I think it's an opportunity to bring on some experience and to maybe elevate things. And I think that that would be, it would be if he can find that guy that, that does that for him, that would be immense for that program. Well, and you're, it, we've talked about this even last year when Kalen DeBoer got the head coaching job um, at Fresno State. And the fact that when you're able to have a, a coordinator or position coach hired away, you know, you look at Mike Hart. First of all, he should have been. I don't know why Michigan and Jim Harbaugh waited so long um to to bring Mike Hart on a, on staff in some sort of role that would help with recruiting immensely uh he just seemed like a good fit for there so Indiana's benefit from that but then you look yeah at the defensive coordinator position and and you're going to start to attract some of these big name guys who are looking to maybe go on and be you know Indiana's never going to compete with a program like Ohio State or Texas USC some of those programs in terms of appeal but you can get some pretty good defensive coordinators and other staff members who are looking to go into those roles or get coaching jobs because now they know, hey, Indiana is not just a dead end job. I'm not just going to work there for three years and then I'm going to be fired um, like as we've seen in the past. Now you can say, hey, you know, I can go to Indiana if I do a really good job in a year or two. 
you know, Kalen DeBoer got that job at Fresno State a year after he was the offensive coordinator at Indiana. And I know he had some previous experience at Fresno State and some things worked out in his favor. But Kane Womack, what was he the defensive coordinator for two seasons, right? And I don't know how long he had been on staff there before that, but just one, I think. So he put in three good seasons at Indiana, and he's going to be. I think the youngest head coach in college football down at South Alabama. Uh, so there's opportunity there and you're going to start to attract people that want head coaching jobs or these higher profile coordinator positions. And I think Tom Allen has to take advantage of that. I don't think you can continue to promote with from within. You can only do that for so long. Um, and, and like you said, it's worked, but at some point you're going to have to take that next step and to take that next step, you've got to start looking at really good coordinators. But as he said before, for some of these openings, his phone's been ringing off the hook. And after watching what that defense did last season and seeing a good chunk of some of those guys returning this season or for the 2021 season, um, I think that there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of interest among some really good defensive coordinators out there to take that job. Uh, Ryan, up. I agree with you. Uh, the, the, well, I thought that too about the the OC position. I, I was really, I, I was wanting to make a splash, but um, the thing about because the reason for that is because I think of Tom Allen. I think he's a defensive guy. He's not an offensive guy. He, but he's a defensive guy. So I, I think you could have the defense as a side where it's something where he's going to have his hand in. I just don't see yes. him not having his hand in defense just because it's such a passion of his. Uh, offense, not so much. Um, so it, it'd be interesting. It's the thing with him, it's about relationships, man. And that's not, yeah. uh, that's, you know, not exactly the case say, between uh, Lane Kiffin and Nick Saban. It's a different kind <laughs> of, a different kind of relationship there. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be interesting. Uh, the NCAA play is going to decide on fans at the tournament. I think within the next couple of weeks, uh, of course, the NCAA tournament taking place within the state of Indiana. I use a Simon Scott Assembly Hall, uh, Mackey Arena up in West Lafayette, Hinkle Fieldhouse, uh, the Farmers Coliseum. Can never remember the name of that place. They've changed it so many times. Um, at the fairgrounds, and then of course Lucas Oil and um, Bangers Life. But whether or not they're going to have fans, man, that. Uh, I just don't see it other than family right now. I just, I, I don't just because of where the numbers are. Uh, I, I, I hope that's not the case. I hope that that changes. We've got vaccines going out to people uh, and we're two months away. So who's to say that it, that it can't take a positive turn uh, and let's, let's hope that's the case. You, um, the winter, we, I don't know how that's going to affect the January and February to hit us, but uh, it, it'll certainly be interesting. I hope that they allow fans. I mean, it would be a cool thing. And and I, I agree with you. I think that that's probably why the NCAA is not jumping to a conclusion just yet. They want to see what happens with this vaccine rollout. They want to see where numbers are going to be. If they continued on a downward trajectory, they'll probably allow fans in some capacity. But right now, the way things stand, I would, I would agree with you. I think that they're probably only going to allow um, family and close friends. The other part of it, too, is I'm guessing they don't want a lot of people to travel. And while you're going to keep teams in the state of Indiana, you're still going to have teams and fans from outside the state coming in so they may want to cut down on that so that may hinder their ability to allow fans it's going to be interesting to see what they do i think that they'll wait to the last possible minute to make that decision because obviously that's they need they need money well they don't need money but they're going to want to get money so if they have an opportunity to allow fans they'll charge an arm and a leg for those tickets but i i just right now i don't see it um but who knows you know a lot can change in a month or two yeah, I just, um, I, I just, I mean, I just don't see it happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that they want it because it's such a unique opportunity. Oh my gosh! Uh, and they know that, of course, you can't say in a normal year because in a normal year it wouldn't be here. Uh, right. But if they were, if they were to allow fans, that's the difference. Those places would be packed every game. Where normally, when you watch the NCAA tournament, especially those Thursday, Friday, day games, there's nobody there. There, right. It looks like a COVID situation, basically with just family and friends. Right. Uh, and uh, you always want to be like, God, that sucks. Because it'll be some great matchups in the NCAA tournament, and there's like really nobody there um, early early games. But in this situation, there would be people here. People would come to these games for two reasons. Number one, because you could. But number two, just because of the venues. Mm -hmm. The venues. Are, hell, I'll go to Hinkle and watch a game just myself. 
uh, <laughs> right. just because. Um, but, and, and the people that have never been to, to assembly hall, I mean, uh, all that. And it's just, I think that it's, it, of course it sucks, but, uh, it, it is what it is, but hopefully that does, uh, remedy itself. Hopefully there's a, hopefully there's a, an Indiana team in the tournament. That would be nice. You know, <laughs> Butler, Notre Dame, Purdue, Indiana, somebody, Bueller, Bueller, somebody's <laughs> got to step up, man. We, we, uh, that would be, that would, that would really suck not to have an Indiana team in that tournament could you imagine having the the whole tournament in the state and then not having any a single team representing the state it's possible it's very possible it is very possible well we'll see i don't the, see indiana and purdue getting left out of this tournament though i don't either because i think the big 10 is that good where if you if if you finish around 500 in the big 10 i think you're getting in just because of how good this conference is. Oh, so, hell, you don't even have to finish. I think you could finish. I think you could finish a game under 500 this year and get in okay, very so, easily. Yeah. So, As a matter of fact, I never had Indiana finishing 500 in the Big Ten. I, I think I had them finishing at 9 11 originally. Um, and I don't think they're going to reach that. But 9 11, I still had them getting in the tournament. Uh, now, if they don't do that, I, that's they're going to end up on the bubble there if they don't do that. But, oh, you know, yeah, you definitely, I, you're going to see. You have to. There's no way not to mathematically to not to see teams in from the Big Ten with a losing record not in the tournament. You, we're probably going to see nine Big Ten teams in there, um, I, and at least especially and especially with Michigan possibly going undefeated. There's going to be some L's, man. There's yeah. going to be a lot of L's because I thought there was going to be four or five L's from the champion. Well, if that's not happening, those losses got to go someplace else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're exactly right, and so that's why I think. I think that we talked about that, but I, I think Purdue and Indiana are good enough. And I think they've, if they continue to play like they played, and I know we've talked about inconsistency and, and struggling to make shots, but if they play like they've played this season and, and win the games they're supposed to, and maybe, maybe sneak out one here or there, I think that they'll be just fine. I think both teams have a chance, have a really good shot to get into the tournament. Um, like I said, the, the strength of the conference right now is working to their benefit because they're at least going to get nine teams in. They might get 10 because nobody thought Minnesota was going to be playing this well. Um, and, and Northwestern, even though they've lost, what, three or four straight now, they, they're still a tough team to beat. So it's it's still a crazy year. But I think I think Purdue and Indiana are still – I think they're in good position to get in. I'll just put, leave it at that. I agree with you. Uh, as of right now, uh, last night uh, talked about that Texas Tech Texas game. Man, that was awesome. Number fifteen Texas Tech knocks off number four Texas. And Matt McClung three at the buzzer. It was that was a gritty game, man. Uh, number sixteen Louisville. They beat Wake Forest seventy seven sixty five. That was another good game. Uh, number sixteen West Virginia knocked off Notre Dame. What is Notre Dame now? They're three and nine. They got whew, three and eight. They're zero and five in the ACC. They're out. See they. See, Notre Dame's got no shot at making a tournament, so they're out. Uh, I haven't looked at Butler lately to see where they are, so Indiana and Purdue maybe – I'll have to check Butler out see where they are. But uh, Northwestern uh, loses to at Ohio State. Uh, Ohio State, they're 10-3, and three, man. They're, they're, they're number 21, but they're on the rise. Uh, 81-71 was that score. But at Villanova, Xavier was postponed. Nebraska, of course, postponed. I mentioned that Nebraska, Illinois, postponed. Indiana's last opponent. And then tonight's game with Michigan State. And uh, who were they supposed to play? I forgot. But postponed. Iowa, Whoever wasn't it? Was. Wasn't Michigan State, Iowa? I think it was. Or was that the weekend game? I know I Michigan remember. State, Iowa was canceled. I can tell you. I can click it right now. Yeah, it was Iowa. That was whew, they were at Iowa, and Iowa just coming off a loss. That's not, it's not not a good time to be facing the Iowa no, in Iowa no. City, nope. coming off a loss. Uh, yeah, and Michigan Arizona State, State Oregon tonight. Yeah, oh, deep trouble. But they're eight and four. Their record is eight and four. That, they're two that's... and four in the Big Ten now. See, that's the problem. They're two and four in the Big Ten. Now we just talked about that. Now yep. there's a difference between just being if you're right around that that five hundred mark. You're fine because around the 500 mark in the Big Ten this year is like being in the higher in any other year in any other league without question. But you can't be you can't be four games under and right. and they're going to they're they're going down. There's I think they're on their way out. They're a team that I was I thought was going to challenge for a minute at the top. Well, hell, that one. They're going to make the tournament now, yeah. um, which was surprising to see. 
from a Michigan State team, a, a Tom Izzo team. Very surprising because they're one of the teams that we always count on that starts off a little slow, but it always, when March rolls around, they are killing it. And not to say that that can't happen this year, but you can only you can't get too far down, and they're headed in that direction already. Yeah, they'd have to they'd have to climb out of a pretty deep. I mean, they're not too deep in it right now, but you keep playing the way they have played, let games slip away. They they'd have to climb out of a pretty deep hole, and they they've been blown out a few times. I mean, they've they've struggled more than I think anybody thought that they would here early on, and then you have COVID situation pop up, so it's it's really not looking good in East Lansing right now. Forrest hit us up on the Andy Moore Honda hotline as well. It says that Sheridan has a long way to go as OC. He just rewatched the Outback Bowl. Uh, Indiana was not prepared offensively, and defensive game plan was pitiful. Yeah, that's uh, that's something I think we can confirm for certain. Uh, I, I would I would agree with that analysis. <laughs> uh, that, that just that just puts it in a nutshell right there, man. Uh, pretty much explains exactly what how it went and. Hopefully they can get that changed around next year. But we got uh, a lot more coming up. John Liskowski is going to join us. John was with us the other day, but uh, he was traveling, and we ended up losing the connection. And uh, I had him on to talk about his former teammate, Wayne Radford, uh, who just passed away. But also he was talking about his recent visits with Coach Knight when we lost him. So uh, looking forward to having him back on here in a few minutes to go back over that. But uh, you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat. Coming to you from the Golf Club Eagle Point Studios, brought to you by the fine folks at Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. They've got a 0% sales event going on right now, or you can get more to your door. You never have to go there. Just go to andymorehonda.com. The fine folks at French Slick Resort and Casino open for business, waiting for you to come on down to French Slick. we got lots more coming up here. John Laskowski next on Indiana Sports Beat right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. But I'm not covering the Hoosiers. You can... Timing, baby. Timing. Timing. Boom. Hit that one right on the... Right on the dot. Yeah. Bam. There's a lot of Culver's in, in down there your way. Culver's? Yeah, we got one like, I don't know, maybe not even a half mile from my house. He's a Culver's man. Is he? We don't really I have. Wish, okay. uh, we were talking to him yesterday or the other day, and, and he came on. I didn't know he was on yet, and we were talking about Freddy's and Culver's. <laughs> and I was saying, but I, I love the fries at Freddy's. The, I hate the fries at Culver's. They're like okay. the, they're like white they're like White Castle French fries. They're I just haven't had White Castle in forever. They're just blah. But okay. Freddy's fries, they're like uh, the old steak and shake fries, shoestring. The thin with, ones. You like the thin with, ones. With seasoning, well, they got seasoning on them, and they've got this fry sauce, this jalapeno fry sauce. It is out of this. Place. Ooh, that does sound good. I'll take the jalapeno fry sauce. I don't like. I don't care much. All right, we got to stop. Shoestring. Yeah, we got to stop because we're getting. <laughs> I had that happen the other day. <laughs> yeah. Hey, John. It's Will, producer with Indiana Sports Beat. Sure, Will. How are you, bud? Good. How are you? Uh, I was on the road. I think that caused me to miss you guys the other day. So sorry about that. No problem. We got about a minute left in the break. I'll get you hooked up here. Okay, sounds good. I got John on, guys. Thank you.
It's a long minute. <laughs> we're back. Can you hear it? Hey, I guess we're back. Did not know. Had no idea. Welcome back. <laughs> Indiana Sports Beat coming to you. Just sitting here waiting for it. Uh, Jim Quayle with you as always. That's the shooting board. Joined by John Laskowski. John, how are you, sir? Well, having a little problem there again, Will. Cannot hear anything from John as he's with us. There we go. Hey, John, how are you, buddy? Good, Jim. Good. Sorry about the last uh, a couple of days ago. I was on the road. We got cut off, but uh, appreciate hey, you. No thinking. problem. Uh, just awesome. To, we get to have you back on. It's uh, great about that. But uh, when we I re original reason to have you on, of course, was uh, talked about uh, your former teammate, Wayne Radford, uh, uh, which I think we got to do that. But just once again, quickly, just a, a tough loss for Indiana. I mean, he was such a great guy, but not only a great player, but he meant a lot to this university and he cared a ton about Indiana basketball. Right. He came to a lot of games. I see him there and uh, he volunteered a lot for different groups, the alumni group and the varsity club. So, uh, yeah, just a terrific guy. And I think he's the first player that's passed from um, uh, from our team, uh, the 75, 76 team. And it's just uh, just uh, sorry to see that happen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how's everything else going with you? I know they keep you busy these days. You got Culver's going on. I was talking about that earlier. My, my matter of fact, I've got a. It's a long time between the game tonight to the game starts, so I got to go out and get a spicy chicken sandwich from Culver's today. So got that oh, big gap. Yeah, baby. We we sell a bunch of them. They are good. It's uh, been open just over two years now. It's been very good. Uh, we're the busiest Culver's in Indiana. We sell, uh, we have more experiences at the cash register than any other of the 50 in Indiana. So Bloomington's the hot spot. It definitely is. I promise you. Anytime you go by there, there's a line there. Uh, but uh, also when we were talking the other day, we, we and talking before, I know that uh, Coach Knight, one of his favorite things is the root beer float that you guys don't offer normally, but you go through special trouble to take care of him for that. Yeah, yeah, no, never get to uh, never get to charge him for the root beer shake. But hey, you know, he, <laughs> without him, I wouldn't have the Culvers in Bloomington. So I think that's a fair deal. And, Absolutely. Uh, and <laughs> so, so that's good. I'm going to go see him today. Um, <laughs> and uh, usually, when I do, Karen will text me, and uh, he may have a salad today for lunch. Yeah, he's staying healthy. He's probably eating healthier than most of us are, being smart along the way. But you mentioned that you get to visit with him once a week. That's got to be just cool for you uh, to be able to do that and have him here and, and to to have that opportunity. It, it is. And and I was in the middle of a story talking about uh, the teams from the 70s. He keeps telling us that, boy, we sure won a lot of games then, didn't we? I said, yeah. We sure did, and I think I mentioned that uh, 37 straight Big Ten games is still a record in the Big Ten. That was set over the 75 and 76 season, um, and that was when the league had 10 teams, and so you trout, you played home and away, everybody 18 games a year, and so two years in a row, we went undefeated and won one more game before a loss, and uh, I think the second longest streak is 23 or 24, and that's the Ohio State teams that coach played on so um uh 37 is a heck of a mark that uh uh i think will be very tough to beat yeah that's 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 a number in this day and age i just don't see him getting there and and you mentioned the fact that it was 10 teams but those 10 teams were the core of the big 10 there's not the the the, the hangers on as much so it was a it was kind of like it is today a battle every night well, uh, you know, with Indiana closing out the season now with only one game with one team outside the Ken Palm 42 rated teams. I mean, you're talking about dog fights every night. And that uh, begins tonight with Purdue and unbelievably lost seven games in a row to Purdue, lost 10 of the last 11. Um, I mean, that's that's just got to stop. We, you know, they're one or two of the only teams to have a all-time record, uh, a Big Ten team to have a winning record against Indiana, and it's by far uh, 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 more games than we'll have a long time to catch up. And I don't know what that is. They 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 really fire up for the for the Indiana game. You know, I don't care which Purdue team it is or what part of the year it is. When they play us, it's like their biggest game of the year, and they are not going to let Indiana beat them. And they they just play darn hard. I expect the same thing tonight. 
Yeah, as a former player, what what when you see that zero and seven, those last seven game losses, what how that hurts a little bit more, I think, for the former players, even than it does for the fans. It, it does because we know what that battle is like, and uh, uh, especially you know we're not at Mac Arena tonight, but uh, we only beat them once up there um, in three tries. Uh, they really protect the home court well, but in Bloomington, that's where you got to jump on it. You've got to take advantage of it. Now, unfortunately, no fans there tonight. That's, that's a big minus for our team because, uh, Purdue will be ready to play. Uh, again, this year, they have a really big guy over seven footer, uh, that, that their big guy always seems to give us trouble. And for whatever reason, all their guys shoot better against Indiana than they do other teams. And, and, and we guess you got to kind of be prepared for that. You know, um, uh, Jackson Davis has played against them. A lot of the guys are new and, uh, they're getting a lot of playing time and it'll be an eye opener when they walk on that floor the first time and see how hard, I mean, they've watched tape of Purdue and, and that's fine, but they haven't watched tape against in this Purdue team against this Indiana team. And that's what's important. So let's take uh, let's take this game, and then now they will have a, a tape to watch when they play them again, and let's see what happens. Yeah, John. Earlier, I was talking last night. I, I was watching the Texas Texas Tech game, and it was just a. Uh, fist fight, not really fist fight, but it was intense. There was a couple of technical fouls. There weren't any fighting, but they were just going at it as tough rivals. And it reminded me of Indiana Purdue of the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. And that's exactly what I said it's going to have to take. Indiana is going to have to play with grit. Trace Jackson Davis, pardon my friends, has got to play pissed off because we've seen what he's like that. He's a beast. He can be an absolute oh, yeah. beast, but he's got to, he's really got to call that up against, especially against this Purdue team. And, and, and then that becomes contagious. The other guys see that too. And so if he does get that spirit, uh, that would be good. You know, no telling how much Armand Franklin can play of any. And that's a, a, a big player that could help because he's had experience in this game. So, you know, you got to play your guys with experience and hope the young guys pick up fast what they need to do. But, you know, um, it's uh, Matt Painter does a great job. Uh, 16 years now at Purdue as the head coach. Uh, always plays well. You know, his dream, of course, was to come to Indiana. Um, but that didn't work out. Uh, uh, he ends up at Purdue, has a great career there, and now as the coach has had a great career. So he's the one who, who instigates this. He, he knows what it's like for a Purdue team to beat Indiana. He knows that feeling he and his teammates had when they were able to do it. And so he projects that onto his team, and that, that's an advantage for them uh, because he's, a, he's been a big part of this rivalry and continues to be so. It's just hard to believe seven games in a row. we got to stop that tonight. Absolutely. He's carried it over from Gene Cady. And yeah, you mentioned that he wanted to play at IU. I think that it, Todd Leary ends up at Indiana because Matt Painter doesn't. It's just funny how history is. If people knew all the, the, the avenues of who could have been where, it, it's just really funny stories. Yeah, absolutely right. And Matt's taking great advantage of it. And, you know, he could be a Gene Cady, you know, be there 30, 35 years because he got the job so young. Um, I tell you, the, the job seems to be a lot more stressful now back, than back in the day. The money is so big and, and the, 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 the spirit to keep winning, to keep that job, uh, you see so many guys get fired every year, uh, cause they're not winning enough. It's, uh, it's tough on these guys. I think a year in coaching is, is longer now than it was say 30 or 40 years ago. Absolutely. Hey, talking about, was there any chance that back in your recruiting days that you didn't end up at Indiana? Was there another school that maybe you had thought before that happened and, and it, that changed? Well, it was interesting. In my recruiting, there were seven, you're allowed seven visits, and I took all seven visits. Six were to mid major schools. Well, I guess five. I, I did visit Notre Dame. But when Digger Phelps got the job, he he took away the scholarship offer they'd given me. That's a whole nother story. Um, well, we got it from South so, Bend. No, but you're right there. He took it the yeah. that way. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, yeah. They uh, the previous coach had offered me a scholarship, and then when Digger got the job, they fired him that my senior year in high school. That Digger got the job and said, "We don't want any Midwest kids. Call him up and tell him he can't come. We're recruiting the East Coast." And that was it. I was done. Um, so my high school coach said, look, you got these five offers from mid-majors. 
where you're going to play. You get a good education. You're going to play. And then you have one offer from a big school. It's Indiana. Now they got Steve Downing who, you know, won the state championship. They got Dave Shepard. They got a bunch of great players and you may never play, but you're going to get a good education and you're going to graduate. Um, what do you want to do? Do you want to play ball or do you want to go to big school and take the big risk? And I said, I'm going to Indiana. That place is beautiful. And if I don't play, that's okay. If I get, if I do play, that's icing on the cake. So I was thinking of it more from a educational standpoint um, because who knows when you get there, what's going to happen. But not only did I get an education, uh, two-time all Big Ten, all academic, by the way. I got Smart that man. One. <laughs> and I got to play ball. So how about that? So it all Not only that, out. cover of Sports Illustrated, back when the cover of Sports uh, Illustrated was like being a Playmate centerfold. I mean, it was big time stuff, man. It, it was. And it wasn't a fan in the crowd, you know, with some other, it was me featured, as a matter of fact. So I. It's incredible. I, it's it's a great. Go to Yogi's in the newsroom. They've got all those covers up there and you can see it in there. It's awesome. Great. A Sports Illustrated cover. You know, it's unfortunate it's in a restroom, but at least it's somewhere, you know. I guess you have to look at the positive side so that, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that the guys get to see that when they go in there. And uh, and then 33 years on TV, I mean, you got to be kidding me. I was the shyest, uh, quietest guy that high school had ever graduated. And to be on TV for a half-hour pregame show live, two-hour telecast live, half-hour postgame show live, three hours a night, and, you know, when you make a mistake on live TV, I mean, they all hear it. Uh, and I did that for, for 33 years. I mean, just unbelievable. So I'm very blessed. And uh, and now a chance to have the Culvers and to have a business going and still relive those Indiana days. Fans come in all the time. We get to visit. I got some pictures up and people be looking. And I go over and say hello. And, and they go, well, whose jersey is that? And I say, well, that's mine. What? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm the owner. I mean, I should be here. It's my business. And we talk about IU and how'd you become an IU fan? And, and then I do have some, uh, some pictures, some, uh, uh, five by sevens on cardstock that, uh, of the sports illustrated cover I signed for kids and, and for folks to hand out so that they can get a little memory of, of the old days of Indiana basketball. It's just incredible that people get to do that and experience that really, it really is. And I could, I remember growing up Chuck, Chuck Marlowe, and John Leskowski, I mean, that was that was it, man. That was the coolest thing in the world. Those cold January winters, the fire was going. I, I can literally, it is one of those memories that I can just shut my eyes and bring right to life. A lot of people come in and talk about their parents uh, who made them sit down in the living room and watch that TV, quiet, don't answer the phone, the game's on, or watching the Hoosiers, sit down here and watch the game. And that's how they became fans because their parents were so uh, into the team and they thought, man, mom and dad, you know, they have jobs, they do this, but man, when it does two hours, they're not doing anything. This must really be important. And so the kids have all learned that and they talk about their greatest uh, memories being with their parents and watching IU games. Yeah. Watching the old WTTV channel four, man, it was the days. John, I cannot thank you enough, brother. I am so happy as always to have you on. It's always a pleasure. I'm hungry. I can't wait to get done and head and get a spicy chicken sandwich at Culver's. Sounds good. Now, the women are playing Purdue as well at Mackey today at 4 o'clock. 4 so o'clock, yes. We got to get two wins today. That would be great. Got to get a double dip. Thanks, appreciate, I appreciate it. Always good to be with you. You betcha. The great John Laskowski joining us here on Indiana Sports Beat. Uh, we got a little bit more to come back for to figure out here. Me and Dustin Shooty. You're listening to Indiana Sports Beat coming to you from the Golf Club Eagle Point Studios. Brought to you by the five folks at Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Zero percent sales event right now. Or get more to your door from andymorehonda.com. Back with more right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosier. He was great. That was awesome. Yeah, that was that was better than yeah, yeah. See th those stories, the recruiting stories. That's hilarious. <laughs> I know. So Indiana, so Indiana basically can thank Digger Phelps for John Laskowski. Yep. There's no because I promise you, he doesn't take that scholarship away. He goes there. That's that's where he's from. 
Oh, really? He was he was a hometown kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't want any Midwest kids. Oh my God, that's Todd Leary said. If Mister Rogers was an IU basketball player, it'd be John Leskowski. <laughs> That is funny shit, and I'm going to say it. <sighs> that is hilarious, and it's true. It actually is true. He's, he's the nicest guy. He's just so soft-spoken, just, uh, just super, super nice guy. So he used to be – what, he used to be a, a- – he used to be a TV guy too. Well, once he, you know, finished his playing career, yeah, he did the TV broadcast, the IU games. Oh, okay. But this is this is in the like the eight, late seventies, the eighties, um, and this was around here, like kind of pre-cable, and then it got to is getting cable because in the if you lived in a, in rural, in Indiana in the eighties, you, you might or you may not have cable. Um, WTTV four was a station out of Indianapolis, Bloomington. I think the only part here was because of IU and they right. used to have all the IU games and that was before there, there was, oh man, he's in Iowa. Um, but yeah, it was just a, a different deal there and, and, and they, they just did everything. Uh, you had IU people doing it where now you, it's ESPN. It's, right. you know, everybody it's has their own deal. Neutral. Yep, very much so. Place to watch all the games every week with the NFL Sunday. Tip How are we on? The push light drafts every Sunday. On? Last break. Uh, we w- went off around 10, 17. So we went maybe two or three minutes over. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, how long was I sitting there not knowing that we were on the air and that we oh, were back? Ten seconds, maybe. Oh, okay. Cool. Not I a big hole. We're back. I was hoping he's going to say three minutes. I was like, you, you, know, you, better, you better be glad you did not say three minutes. I'd have had a heart attack. My heart would have exploded right here. <laughs> this is gonna be- and you jerk it out. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat here on this Thursday. Justin Schutte sitting here from Saturday Tradition. Just finished up with John Laskowski. Just, I'm still laughing. Indiana can thank Digger Phelps. There are so many stories that I still it, – it kills me that the stories that I continue to learn that, that, mm-hmm. that, that I've never heard, and that's one of them. I had no idea. I knew about Todd ending up at IU because, you know, the Matt Painter involvement um, – it, it, and it's just funny how there's so many of those other stories that this person's here because they went there and vice versa. <laughs> I did not know that about Laskowski. That, and, I mean, because and I promise you, had he not done that, he would not had he not taken that scholarship away, he would have played for Notre Dame. That's where he was from. And so, and, and he became such an in, integral part of that 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 those that 75, 74, 75 team. Crazy. And 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 Matt Painter the other day just to to expound on this was I don't remember what the podcast was. I think it was a podcast that AJ Guyton helps uh, run as well, but he was talking was about 68. Yes. Yes. It was exactly that. And he was talking about, he went down to, I think it was Evansville for a visit. And he was told that uh, one of the, the, the guy he was supposed to watch, that was the role he was going to take over. The guy he watched that night scored 65 points and he still chose to go to Purdue over Evansville. Um, so you know, it's just crazy. They say that recruiting is never not going to be it. Recruiting is always going to be interesting. But to me, it's always more interesting, you know, five, 10, 20 years after the fact, as opposed to when you're watching it live, because that's when you learn some of these really interesting and fun stories. Yeah. And the fact that they can be so old, though, and still not that I'm, other people know them. I don't always know. I'm like, there's I forget sometimes like the, the Hulls connection to Bloomington. The reason that they're here is Jordan's grandfather was an assistant coach to Bob Knight at Army. They came to Bloomington when he got the job. And then so, but all those little bitty, uh, th- those cool stories are just funny. They're just, and they never end. I mean, and there's so many more that we don't know about. Indiana taking on uh, Purdue tonight. Again, they desperately need 
to win for so many different reasons. Uh, obviously, just for the morale uh, of the, the the team. Getting for Archie, I know he'd certainly like to get that monkey off his back. I know the fans would like to get that monkey off their back. The 0-7 monkey, he's got an 0-5 monkey against uh, Matt Painter. It starts getting into that Jim Harbaugh Ohio State thing that just yes. becomes a, just a, a big rock that just – you're just carrying it's like carrying a rock around on your back, just walking around with it all the time. Um, but and I think this may be the best position that they've been in for a couple of years. I've seen this team play with grit and know how they can do. Um, so it is there. It's not like it's not capable. It's not like you go in, you're going into a game saying, Well, they got no chance. That's not the case at all. They have very, every bit of <clears throat> Uh, chance to win this game. I mean, they should win this game, but they have to play how they have to play. You have to come to play. You have to come with the energy. You have to bring it all. And I don't mean for the second half. Stop right. putting yourself in a hole that you have to exert so much energy to come back on. Just put it out there now. Get to it. And I, that's something that they're going to have to do tonight. Right. And I, I think I disagree with you just slightly on this because I thought last year, because of how poorly Purdue was playing last season, I thought Indiana, I thought that that was a lock. You know, we talked about Bob Knight coming back. Purdue was playing poorly. I don't remember what Indiana's record was. They might have been ranked in the top 25 at the time of the game. I, I could be wrong on that. But I remember thinking that that should, have, that should have been a guaranteed win for Indiana. It ended up not being. So you have to take some pride tonight. This is all about pride. You have to you have to say, you know what, we're we have to get at we have to get this win. This is about, you know, taking back the state if you're Indiana. This is about getting Archie Miller his first win over Purdue. So there's a lot of different factors. And again, we talked about, you know, winning, getting another game. And I would this puts them back over I, I don't have the records in front of me. Puts them back over 500 in the Big Ten, right? That puts them at four and three, I think, in Big Ten play. So there's a lot of different things going on right now. Um, but it, it all comes down – this comes down to pride. This comes down to who wants it more because we've seen these two teams go toe-to-toe -to -toe these last couple of years, and Purdue has essentially you know, forced their will on Indiana. And Indiana's back down each time. Tonight, you can't back down. You have to – He's right. Uh, John was right when we were talking to him earlier. You know, if Trace Jackson Davis gets into that mode where he plays, as you said, pissed off, that's everybody else is going to start to play that way, too. And you have to play everybody. Everybody has to be playing their A game to get a win tonight, because as we've talked about, doesn't matter how good Indiana is, how good Purdue is, how bad Purdue might be. Purdue's bringing their A game tonight. You can you can pro, you can bet your your house on that. Absolutely, because not only is it the rivalry, but they know they're on the road. So they're already, you, you already kind of put yourself at a disadvantage. So you jack yourself up a little bit more and, and you bring that extra energy. And I think sometimes when you're the home team, there's a little too much comfort there uh, because of that. And, and, and it takes, maybe it takes you a while to get that, that energy going. You have to be spurred by something, but uh, these visiting teams are, are bringing it, man. And so you got to bring it. But in a game like this, it's all right there. You come to play tonight. You you make a decision. I you know you can't decide that you're going to win the game, but what you can decide is you're going to give every bit of the effort that you can give, and that's all you can do. And if you do that, though, things usually work out pretty well. Yeah, yeah. If you if if Indiana, I think Indiana has a more talented roster right now than Purdue does. Um, I, and I don't think a lot of people would argue with that. I think Purdue probably has better depth, but I think Indiana has the better roster. And so if all guys are playing as well as they can and as hard as they can, you're going to give yourself a great position, put yourself in a great position to win this game tonight. And I, like you said, that's all you can ask. But if, if Indiana plays as well as it's capable, then there's no reason they shouldn't win this game tonight. Well, you know, and we've talked about Arch. I, I don't think that Archie has really grasped this rivalry. Don Larry points something out great that, Pat, Matt Painter grew up in the rivalry. Yep. Uh, Archie didn't. And, 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 and definitely when it's not, it's natural for Matt Painter. It's just complete. It's organic. That makes it organic. Yep. So when you come in and it is, I can see that being a difficult situation to unorganically incorporate yourself into a rivalry that you just don't naturally have that for. But uh, as a coach, I guess you have to find a way to do that. 
uh, and because you have to find a way to impart that upon your team. Uh, so, well, but we'll and, see how it goes, man. And, and let me just throw this out here. I know we're running out of time, but you know, you look at it, you have to immerse yourself. This is what we've talked about. There seems to be somewhat of a disconnect to at times between Archie Miller, the fans, the state, you have to immerse yourself in this. You know, you take this job, you take everything that comes with it. And this Purdue, this Purdue beating Purdue, it's not like beating Michigan State. It's not like beating Northwestern. It's not like beating Michigan. This is different. It has to be different. You have to immerse yourself in this rivalry. You have to immerse yourself in this program. This game means something to the players, to the former players, to the alumni, to the fans, to the current students. This game is important. And so maybe he's starting to learn that. I don't know, but we've talked about that being a disconnect. Tom Allen, I know he kind of grew up in this rivalry too, would never take a game like this for granted no matter where he's coaching. Archie Miller can't do the same thing. I know it's easier for a guy like Matt Painter. He grew up in it. He played in it. Obviously, it's 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 easier for him. But when you take this job, you take all that comes with it, and that includes this game, and you have to make it a priority. This has to be priority number one. Every it has to be priority number one every season, just like Michigan and Ohio State is that's the number one priority for both those programs every year. I agree, man. I'm glad that uh, Todd Leary is not a drinking game right now because uh, I'd be <laughs> wasted. Don't forget, after the game with Todd Leary tonight, coming to you, of course, live from Yogi's after the Indiana Purdue game. That game tips at seven, so roughly nine o'clock. Uh, looking forward to that. I uh, appreciate uh, you as always, of course, Dustin Shooty from Saturday Tradition. Make sure you follow him and check that out. John Leskowski as well. If you're in the Bloomington area, get by Culver's. I'm going to head there for lunch today, as a matter of fact. Uh, spicy chicken sounds great. Uh, looking forward to after the game tonight with Todd. And uh, tomorrow we'll be back, of course, for Dell Jones, uh, Jay Guyton, and all those guys will be joining us as, as usual. But uh, hopefully we'll be talking about a, a win for Indiana and uh, an upward tick in the season. Until then, Dustin, appreciate you, brother. Hey, it's always fun, Jim. Take care and enjoy the game tonight. Appreciate you guys. Most importantly of all, please go out and do something nice for somebody. Wear your mask. And until tomorrow, I'm Jim Coyle. I will see you on the radio. My favorite day of the week to do. It's just easy. It's just always, uh, this is just.